Hey, where's Dwight? You didn't hear? Decapitated, whole big thing. We had a funeral for a bird. I'm pretty sure none of that's real. You're not real, man. Welcome back, guys. Today, we're going to continue watching Jesse Lee or Boss Lee and Colleen from No Shame Sales Game try to debunk anti-MLM arguments. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly encourage you to give that a watch before watching this video. As a brief recap, Jesse Lee and Colleen are MLM coaches, meaning they've reached the last stage of their boss babe evolution, and now they roam the earth looking for the unsuspecting stay-at-home mom that they can sell their crappy training courses to. They both have pretty large followings on social media, and they recently did an Instagram live together where they shared their thoughts on the anti-MLM movement. I'm gonna finish watching the rest of their live along with Drew from Genetically Modified Skeptic. Hopefully their arguments are a little bit more convincing in the second half of their live stream, but I kind of doubt it. All right, let's dive right in. I want you to talk about this because this is one of my favorite posts you ever made, um, and I, I turned it into a reel. You were talking about... Um, you think it's odd that people will share their whatever, 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 and that's fine. You know what's what I'm talking about. So why don't you just take over on this one? Because it's like my favorite. They'll share, oh no, which one was it? They'll share the like Amazon link, but not their, or they think it's, oh, I can't. You were remember. like, you'll share your favorite Peloton instructor loudly yeah. and you won't get paid. Oh, and you'll share your, your you know, you'll share your Amazon links and, and whatever. And you guys <laughs> celebrate that. Drop the link, drop the link, drop the link. link send me the link. Where'd you get that? Can you send me the link? It's literally the same thing. And like, people, yeah, you'll share your, your Wordle. You'll share your Starbucks. You'll talk about Bridgerton. You'll share your Amazon link. I say it all the time because it's just, it's whatever I'm seeing all over my Instagram. It's like, really people are like getting mad about what we do, but it, it's like we've publicly aligned with a company, a brand, whatever, and people, they literally all do it all day, every day, and I just cannot comprehend, like, what is wrong with selling and getting a kickback from selling. I, like, if- That's all it is. The difference is, is the structure of the company. I mean, if someone is plugging a certain product that is made by a company that has some huge ethical violation, some scandal that people are concerned about, so they're not into the company, people will get criticized for promoting that kind of company too. So when you're promoting an MLM, yeah, I think there's a difference there because people are not okay with the structure of the company because mm -hmm. of the data that's actually available that shows these are not the most sustainable or ethical uh, business models there are out there for people. Yeah, and I think that there is like a difference between just sharing something that you happen to be interested in at the time versus constantly shilling the same products yeah. for months on end. Like if I share an Instagram story of like the drink I got from Starbucks that day, it's not because I'm like trying to sell that drink to my friends. It's just because I'm like, oh, this is good. And like, I just enjoyed this drink. And yeah. I just wanted to share it. It's just people share things that they're interested in. And it's not always in order to sell people on it. I mean, if you were trying to sell people Starbucks by sharing it every single day, it would probably make people not actually want Starbucks and possibly criticize Starbucks for encouraging that behavior if they were. Yeah, yeah. Anyone, any MLM hater, any not M like anybody, if you liked a product, I I'm, I'm guarantee you've re recommended it to somebody else. And if this company that you love so much says, hey, I'll give you a 10, 15, 20% just or kickback off of everything you sell with this link, nobody would say no because it would be stupid to say no. Everyone wants and could use extra money. Like, sorry, everyone does it. And some of us are smart enough to get paid for it. Also with MLM, it's not just that you're getting a kickback from just selling products. It's not like an affiliate program. You have to, with most MLMs, you have to buy a certain amount each month. So you're having to put right. into that company every single month. It would be like 
somebody being affiliate of like Target, but they're they are only an affiliate if they buy a hundred dollars worth of tar- Target products every single month. Yeah, that's not usually, as far as I know, that's not usually how affiliate programs work. So it's not just that you're getting a kickback; it's that you also have to invest in the company and you're also encouraged to recruit. It's not just selling products. Yeah, that's the mic drop right there. All of us do it. Some of us are smart enough to get paid for it. I just yeah. don't- and like with you, when you going on about what you were just talking about, I said a while ago, like if network marketing was a male dominated industry, like the critics wouldn't be anywhere, but you have the, like the men are at the top. So you're not seeing the men, you're seeing the women do all the work and relationship building. But you just said that all the men are at the top. So it is a male dominated yeah. in a way, or the men are at the top of the pyramid. So it is dominated by them when we are critiquing them. Yeah. Plus people critique scams that are run by men. Like I know that they they probably don't agree with this, but crypto and NFT, that's mostly men. And yeah. I think that those things are scams. People critique that too. We're not going after MLMs because it's mostly females. It's just, it happens to be something that's, been demonstrated to be a scam yeah and it happens to be mostly women that are in mlms also if you look at early anti-mlm so videos like mine on young living and herbalife i'm criticizing gary young and des walsh if you look at the john oliver special that came out in 2017 he criticizes primarily the leaders of Amway, who are all men, and mm. Des Walsh, the leader of Herbalife. There's also more videos by the YouTuber Knowing Better, who criticizes pyramid schemes, and he focuses primarily on the male leaders. I know that right now, anti-MLM is in a place where it is mostly women criticizing mostly women. For the most part. That said, the criticism toward men does exist out there and has actually been a part of some of the most impactful media in Mm -hmm. the entire anti-MLM movement's history. Yeah. If it was all men doing it, you wouldn't see the same type of criticism. And it's so anti-women, it's sick. Yeah, uh, that's why I chose network marketing. And I just, I've been talking about this a lot lately because it's stunning to me. (laughs) It's, It's just, it's stunning to me, I just don't understand. I chose network marketing because you could not tell me how much I should earn. I get paid. They're not going to like this. Guys, you get paid for the exact amount of work you do. That's not true. And that's also an extremely vague statement. What do you mean by work? Are you quantifying that by hours you put in about how many cold messages or people you're recruiting in a day like how do you measure that and i think it's been shown that it's not directly related to how much effort you put into it because there's some people that spend you know 50 60 hours a week doing this kind of thing who don't make any money so that's just like a completely untrue statement market saturation is something that you really have to consider i mean say that someone is in charlotte north carolina and no, the the entire market is completely untapped for a certain MLM and somebody gets in there and they work 20 hours a week and they actually seriously turn a profit. But then they go, like someone else in LA tries to sell for the exact same MLM, but the market has already been flooded with tons of distributors trying to do the same thing. This person puts 80 hours a, a week into this. They're not going to get the same result as in a smaller town if the the market saturation is different. I mean, there. it's it's a dream that people would like to believe that the amount that you work will be equivalent to the amount that you get paid. You know, there's a direct correlation there. I'm sorry, it's just not yeah. true. And if we're going to be selling people opportunities, we need to actually be truthful and honest and accurate about what they're actually getting into. Leaving out things that are important yeah, that's super dishonest in my opinion. Yeah. Whether you like that truth or not, yep. you get paid for the exact amount of work you do. And then it's like, oh my God, but my aunt Susan worked really hard and she talked to all these people for two weeks and she didn't make any money. <laughs> the examples we tend to use are not people that have tried MLM for two weeks. There's people... 
that have stories that have tried MLM for years and have not made money. It's not just people that try it for a couple weeks that are the ones that don't make money. It's like, statistically, it's mostly people that have been in it for a long time. (laughs) This is a relationship business, which goes back to why women are so good at it. Okay. And I will tell you, I never signed up for get rich quick. Ever. Ever. I signed up for, I suck at sales. I suck at recruiting. I suck at leadership. I suck at all this stuff, but I feel like I've joined a personal development program with a compensation plan attached. And if I can become a better person, I will get paid for it. And what do you know? I go to Tony Robbins events. My whole entire world gets flipped upside down in, in, in three hours. I'm like, Oh my God. That's, that's actually really frightening to me. A personal development program with a compensation plan attached. Yeah, what does that really mean? That that makes it sound like really what this is, is a lifestyle. If a business is selling you a lifestyle, they're trying to get you on the hook. Yeah. What are they trying to get you on the hook for? That will determine the harm. When companies like Young Living try to sell you on, oh, it's not just a collection of products, it's a lifestyle. What they're doing is they're trying to make you have an exclusive relationship with them at the expense of other things. When it's things like supplements, that means at the exclusion, at the expense of investing in your health in other ways, like going to the doctor when you need to. If it's about like, if if you're calling it a lifestyle that has a compensation plan, that means that you're making this company your entire life. And like, you're selling it for other people to make. Their yeah, life. like every product you use is going to be from this company. Well, I guess in her case, I mean they just sell like supplements and health products, so maybe not every product, but a lot of the products you use, things that are in your house, all of your friends and people you communicate with, your community is all going to be in this company. Every event or thing you do is going to be associated with this company. I guess I just don't really understand why people would want to make their entire life dependent on a company. Like when I worked in corporate America, I didn't want to like have every aspect of my life connected to the company I worked for. I wanted to like have friends outside of that and like have things I do outside of that. I guess I just don't really understand that mentality. I don't think it's a selling point that, oh, your entire life will be about this company. Yeah, that's not a selling point. I had no idea how many limiting beliefs I had in my life, which was why I couldn't sell, which was why I couldn't recruit, which is why I couldn't lead, because I had so much childhood trauma around any of this stuff, all of this stuff, that I felt like I couldn't function. Yeah. And I literally broke through a board. And next thing you know, I'm like, whoa, I, I'm like, I feel like I'm a little bit free. You don't, you don't get that in real life. You don't get that in a job. Okay. Let's say that all of that is true for her. Is Does it strike you that she's selling this as something that will actually help you fix your mental health concerns? No, oh, that's, yeah, that's scary. This will help you get over trauma. It's not just going to give you job, yeah. job training. It's going to make you a better person. It's going to help you with your mental illness. It's going to help you with your trauma. Yeah, that's scary. That's just straight up dangerous. If you have childhood trauma, please go see like a licensed counselor. Yeah. Don't join an MLM to try to address those problems. Yeah. I go to high level leadership training that, that my company paid for because I was a board director, right? A sloppy board director. This is like eight years ago. I mean, I was a hot mess express, like, oh my God. And I start learning about different leadership types and I learned about personality types and I learned how to talk to people and I learned how, how to communicate and I learned about charisma and I learned how to talk to strangers and I learned about habits and I learned about all of this stuff. And then next thing you know, I applied it. Yep. So you know what, your Aunt Susan or whoever it was you said, yeah, you damn right. She might have been throwing up on people for two straight weeks, barfing all over them with cold messages <laughs> that somebody trained them on. I don't know who, I don't know why, unsubscribe to that person, leave that team, good God. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's a, I digress. Like, like, yeah, she might be doing a whole bunch of mess. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand, you have to elevate both sides of who you are. You can't just take a ton of action and not develop. And this side has to catch up with this side. You're only going to be able to build to the level in which you are developed. And every single version of who you are is going to require a totally different level of education. It's going to require a totally different level of personal development. And so people get mad that I join masterminds. And people get mad that I spend money on events. People get mad that I'm constantly, you know, learning and growing and reading and teaching. And I'm like, 
Are you kidding me? I do all of that because that's the only way I can elevate my income. It's the only way I can coach through different situations. The only way is if I'm, if I'm, if I go to an event and I learn leadership skills that are, that have nothing to do with where I currently am, but I go, whoa, that's a skill set that's way out here. And then I'm able to say, hold on, let me like beep, beep, back it all the way up. So when I am there and that situation does happen, I go, Colleen, I got you. I have the solution to this. Hold on a second. Like, I know exactly what to say because I learned, because I spent the money on that course, because I, I grew. No, nope. and hold on. Nobody gets mad when you join a job, which is what you do. You join a job. You accept the job. You join in every single job. With jobs, typically, you apply for a job that you want to have. With MLMs, a lot of the time, they recruit people. Like it's the MLM or someone in the MLM that's reaching out to someone else to recruit them. With a job, you you go to a job that you go to a job that you want to work at. Job I have ever been part of. There is some kind of income requirement to go to work the first day. Yeah. Yeah. Like hello. Yeah. Like. I'll take it all the way back to when I'm 13 years old and I got my first job. My first job was an ice cream shop. You cannot work without non-slip shoes. Non-slip shoes back then, I don't know if they're cheap right now, but back then they were like $80. And I was like, what the f I think? Uh, the internet was like just coming of age because, you know, I'm freaking aging myself now, okay? But I'm like trying to Google to find some like discount shoes, these non-slip shoes. Y'all comment below. What are those shoes called? You know what I'm talking about, those non-slip shoes. Anyone in the restaurant business knows exactly what I'm talking about. Also, uh, curious where everybody is watching from. I want to see where our viewers are. So if you want to comment that below, I'd be curious to see. But guys, those were so expensive. And luckily, that was like my only thing that I had to pay for. I mean, here's the difference though. We actually have data that shows that even though there are expenses to both sides, one of them makes most people not even break even. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, I, I used to be in social work. We helped teenagers get jobs at fast food restaurants all the time. We had to make sure that they had the proper clothes, the proper non-slip shoes, sure. They made all of that back within a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then they kept making money from there. If we broke it down mathematically, we could show that they broke even rather quickly. Yeah. Personally, I think that companies should be paying for those kind of things. Oh, yeah, I agree. I, I think that, like, if it's a requirement that you need non-slip shoes or need some sort, something for your uniform, I think companies should yeah. be paying for that. But also, it's like if you're starting out as a teenager and you're getting your first fast food job and it requires non-slip shoes, typically you only have to buy that once. Like if you start working at McDonald's and that's what you need, you, ha you have to buy that once. Mm -hmm. And then if you move to like Taco Bell, you have it already. So you don't need to purchase that. And there's a lot of jobs where you don't have to like, for like the last job I had, I didn't have to buy anything to work there. Like I didn't, there was nothing like that I needed to get. So it's just, it's not really the same thing. I would say just ultimately, the data is revealing here. Look at the data and tell me which type of job makes you break even more often. Yeah. That's the only thing that's even relevant. But then I got a job waiting tables and I was like, oh, I have these special shoes that I can, you know, just take over to, to, the, to, this, re to this restaurant. I worked at a pizza shop next. Mm -hmm. But then I had to buy the apron and yeah. I had to buy the little book to put the stuff in. And then I had to, tr I had to, I had to do the, the training where yeah. you're like, you're following people around for $3 an hour, by the way, you were getting paid the $3 and 13 cents an hour or whatever. Okay. So don't talk to me about livable wages and non-livable wages. I'm literally not here for it. Okay. Yeah. Or, or you, why is nobody talking about the money y'all spend on higher education? I don't even like going on <laughs> higher education. Okay, I have to say with this, have they been living under a rock? Because there's so many people that talk about the problems with higher education and that it shouldn't like be costing how much it does. Like there's yeah. so like there's a whole conversation about that's being had and people pushing for free college. Like, I mean, what? One, of, one of the main things that Biden voters are trying to hold Biden accountable for is his promises to forgive student loan debt. Yeah. <laughs> I like, mean, yeah, people are talking about it. I, I, it blows my mind. Like, how did they not know that? Or I, I don't know. Because I'm 
because <laughs> that is like uh that I think is like a little bit um classist. But like education. Yeah, somebody just said a hundred K to become a nurse. Like <laughs> Like, oh. nobody calls that a scam. Yes, there are a lot yeah. of people that call that a scam. I think that's a scam. I do not think that you should go in debt to be a nurse. <laughs> yeah. You go to college, even a community college, you're spending how much a year? You go to a full-time university, nobody even blinks an eye. when You're actually celebrated in our society when you graduate from college and you have, some of you, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt, which I already talked about. You mm-hmm. can't, it, it never gets deferred. Ever. You will die. Okay, and you know what you think? Oh, well, I'll just die with the debt. Okay, so now you've died. Now, now you're dead. And now your family accrues your debt. Correct. Because you thought you were doing the right thing and going and getting, uh, go, going and getting formal education. Right. Mm. I mean, does that same thing not happen when older people get involved with MLMs and spend a bunch? Yeah. I mean, hypothetically, yes, it can happen on both sides. Saying that, this traditional route is bad doesn't make your alternative viable yeah it's just what about ism yeah all they're doing is like they're not actually addressing anything we're saying or the anti-mlm arguments they're just saying oh look over here this is a problem too and like this job has a problem too it's like what we're taught we're trying to talk about the problems with mlms yes there's problems with other jobs but that's not the argument we're having right now right oh but then it's uh, but that's the whole like reason that conversation on my Instagram started a couple days ago because it was like, oh, well, the difference because I had a post, it was like CEO, VPs, this, this, like it's a pyramid, right? And then somebody was like that one. They don't like that one, Colleen. I don't hurt that one. Like, Trigger warning central. And they were like, well, the difference is in our, like, we get better and cars and pensions and this. And I was like, hold the phone you are coming from like privileged town usa or whatever thinking that this is how the world works 213 an hour like people like pensions cars wtf are you talking about like people like with nurses we're talking about how little they get paid teachers people who like actually impact lives are getting paid nothing and had to pay 100k to get a degree i saw somebody who was talking about um she didn't want me to say like her actual profession but she and she said working in the height of the pandemic she's in chemistry and creation of things she was given a wooden bowl as a you know for working at the height of a bowl i mean yeah that's terrible but what did your mlm give you for working in the height of the pandemic yeah (laughs) again saying how bad things are outside of MLMs doesn't make MLMs any better. Yeah. If they had data, they could just show us, but they don't, so they make excuses. Yeah. She was like, what? are you kidding? <laughs> um, um, we can go to teachers for a second, actually. I don't know if it's your internet. Is it your internet or my internet? I don't know who's. Uh-oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I, you, I heard the wooden bowl comment, and I was giggling and I'm a little bit stunned over here. The yeah. woman was too stunned to speak. Um, so, <laughs> um, okay, wooden bowl. I, that that threw me. Actually, I was given socks. Natasha says your husband gets a ham every year. Some turkeys. Yeah, we won't get into that conversation because I'll go straight back into shadow ban. But I hear you, healthy homemakers. I hear you. I see you. I validate you and your your uh, your conversation there. We won't get into that. But um, I wonder what that conversation was about. Yeah. It sounds like maybe people are making like crazy health claims or something. Is what it that sounds is something like. That could get you in Facebook or Instagram jail. Yeah. But she noticed she said I validate you, so obviously she's agreeing with that <laughs> yeah, stuff. That's true. Um, like. None of it makes sense. Like, make it make sense. And pizza parties. Okay, so here's what bothers me. Here's what bothers me. It pisses me off for the nurses, and it pisses me off for the teachers. So pissed. Here's why. Teachers, it really pisses me off, because I, I remember specifically a chemistry teacher speaking of that I had in high school. And she was like this beautiful, gorgeous woman. And she was bartending every single night and then showing up at school because she was not, there was not enough money in the school system. She had to pay to put stuff in the classroom. And I was always like, what are you doing? And then I learned that's normal. That's normal. 
I yeah, I didn't know. That's normal. Like I learned that in high school when I asked her. She's like, we all all of us have second jobs. I'm like, all these teachers have second jobs. I mean, yeah, that's horrible again, but just because there's problems with that does not mean that MLM is the answer. And nurses are the same. So nurses, they work 12 hour shifts, literally saving lives. Okay. Like literally saving lives, 12 hour shifts, um, losing their jobs. If they don't, uh, abide by the government law, we'll just throw that out there. Okay. Losing their jobs. So they can't even save people's lives. And then on the days they have off because they work usually like three, 12 hour shifts a week or yeah, three, 12 hour shifts a week. They're out there waiting tables. They're out there working at the Home Depot. They're out there bartending. They're out, like the people that are supposed to be running the society that spent all this money to get to get uh, degrees and to, yeah, to get degrees and everything. Like they got to pay for their own scrubs. Yeah. And you don't call that a scam. They have to pay for all this stuff. And we don't we don't even look. They're working 12 hour shifts. Do you know how much money they spend on coffee? I'm not even kidding. Like your nurses are all on freaking uppers because not like illegal uppers. Okay. They're all on uppers, like tons and tons and tons and tons of caffeine because they're working 12 hour shifts and being underpaid. Yeah. And people are mad at us. Have you, were you asleep during, during the Occupy movement? What about the entire political campaign of Bernie Sanders? What about Biden raising the minimum wage? People are t- are yeah. screaming at the top of their lungs about this stuff. They're not blaming MLMs for it. We're we're complaining about abuses of capitalism, of unregulated capitalism. Yes, an MLM MLMs being legal, in my opinion, uh, are they're just another symptom of poorly regulated capitalism. I mean, yeah, it is a scam that teachers have to buy their own stuff. It's mm-hmm. a scam that nurses have to pay so much for school, not have any of that debt forgiven, and then they have to buy their own scrubs. Yes, that is all terrible. It is all abuse. MLM is too. Yeah. And those things are not in conflict. Yeah. These are like some of the most hardworking, amazing heroes, and they're not getting paid enough. And it's like, we're really the scam artists, please. The stethoscope is $100. Are you freaking kidding me? You're buying your stethoscope? See, now this is, let me talk to you about a scam really fast. Okay. All right. Let me talk to you about a scam. <laughs> You have to buy your own stethoscope? Apparently. I'm clearly not a medical professional, so I have no idea. But that sounds legit. That's ridiculous. That's insane. I don't know, man. I don't know. But I think this conversation has just been like, oh, I'm looking at the comments now. So many nurses are MLMers. Like, licenses. Oh, licenses for nursing and teaching. So expensive. Like, you pay for that? Hold on, I'm getting educated. <laughs> I didn't even. Now, oh, I, oh, I'm about to. <clears throat> I need to go to the ER. <laughs> I found a new pool to recruit from. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Grubs, shoes, etc. To to prescribe, we pay for a license. Had to buy my own stethoscope. Your nursing license is two fifty a year. So your annual fee. What you're telling me is your annual fee to be a nurse to save lives is two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, they need to pay for their licenses and we get renewed every two years. Oh, people are like in the, they're talking to us now. Insurance agent license costs, licensing insurance. Yeah. So like what the actual, but like we <laughs> talk about, right. And I'm like, this is not, nobody is shitting on any profession. No. And we're talking about how it's, we think that's normal and okay. But there's also another option over here that's like not normal. It's outside the box, and people are like, meh, meh, meh. "Scam alert!" Really? People are not shitting on MLMs because it's not normal and it's outside the box. First of all, yes, people are absolutely criticizing what's considered normal. Our normal, the the normal way that we're compensated for our work, is completely abusive in this country. Yes that does not subtract from the fact that this not normal way is also abusive. Let me give you an example. I am a full-time YouTuber. That's where I make all my revenue. That's not a normal way to be compensated. That's not a normal way to make money. But no one shits on me for doing this. No one calls me a scam artist for doing this because I'm not going around promoting the very obvious lie that anyone can do YouTube. 
one of the reasons why I was able to be successful is because I was just in the right place at the right time. Like there's a lot of luck involved and I would never tell someone that they can just, you know, the more you work on your YouTube channel, the more you're gonna get paid. Most people who try to make it on YouTube fail. So I would never tell someone anything different. If I was, people would be saying that I'm a scam artist because of that. Not because I'm just, I have revenue streams that are not normal. Yeah. And with YouTube, you're not like having to recruit other YouTubers yeah. in order to like keep your channel sustained. Right. Oh, we have to pay for CPR training. No, nursing and education hours. Nursing license is $600 a year. What? Yeah, see, I didn't know that. So all of this boils down to the same thing though, because if we go through their argument list, it's a, it's a couple of things. All right. One of the very first things I hear all the time is it's only the 1%. We already went through that. Okay. I just want to reiterate this for people who maybe didn't watch part one, yeah. but it's not the statistic that we cite is not that 1% are successful. It's that 99.7% of people lose money or, or don't make any money or lose money. There's a difference between those two statements. Yeah. That's, that's, that's not, that's not an accurate statement because we don't know what success is. The yeah. other side of that though I will tell you is there's a one percent of literally everything so if you're gonna have a hard time getting along with people that are the one percent in real estate one percent in the world one percent in whatever you're just gonna have an issue with everything okay mm -hmm. that's the first thing second thing I hear is about it preying on women we've already debunked that as well I mean didn't she also say that men at the top who are doing a bunch of unethical recruiting are basically taking unethical advantage of all of the women who are doing the ethical <laughs> yeah. promotion of MLM by actually selling products. Yeah. That completely contradicts what she said in this in this stream. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so all the rumors are untrue, okay? So if, the, if I was Lizzo, that's what I would say today. <laughs> um, actually, why, we can do that. You guys can put common common things in the chat because I don't want to forget any of these. You can, you can drop some of the common uh, things that you hear that you want us to kind of go over. Um, the fees, I hear that. You're paying to do whatever. We've went through that. Claire, I had no idea it was $600 a year for some of these licenses to be a nurse. That's actual insanity. I, I'm not that great at math. So 600 divided by, I'm not even try. Yeah. That's a lot. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, I don't even see. I don't either. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all <laughs> of the, I'm trying to think of like excuses I hear all the time, but I mean, I think we've debunked a lot. I think we like we've hit on some things and just shed light on the fact that like nobody is preying on anybody. Nobody's a victim of anything. Um, we're... Oh wait, I want to hit on that really fast. What, you guys? If you <laughs> what everything in your life, I I love y'all enough to tell you this. Everything in your life is a direct reflection of how you are living your life. Oh, that is just not true oh, and that is such a that's such a toxic thing to be saying there's no such thing as a real victim so if someone is uh, a victim of assault or fraud or that's because they put themselves in that situation yeah oh, they were asking that's terrible for how does she not like think where her line of thinking is going to go with that because if you're saying that and everything is a result of what you do. It's like, okay, so anything bad that happens to you is because you did something. Yeah, it's your and fault. That's, that's not true. Well, it's very convenient for her because she's actually monetarily successful. So she can say that. If she says that, the implications of that for her are, I deserve all of this. I earned all of this. I was not lucky. I do not enjoy privilege. I was not in the right place at the right time. I am successful because I am a good person and I'm a hard worker. Everyone that's not successful is either a bad person or not a hard worker. Yeah. That's that's toxic and an abusive narrative. If someone in authority is giving you that, run. Yeah. It's very law of attraction-y. Yeah. Like I anything that bad hap that happens to me, I have attracted it into my life. Bad things do happen to good people, yeah. and we have to grow up and live with that fact, as unfortunate and sad as it is. Your life looks the way your life looks because of choices you decided to make. So you cannot get mad at anybody for doing anything. Like, if somebody said, hey, there's a sale on a product, and you decided to take your credit card and run a credit card for an amount of income that you knew you shouldn't have been doing, you need to take responsibility for that. 
okay? If you have spent an, an egregious amount of money on whatever, you have to understand you literally made that choice. Nobody, and, and I hate the, oh no, see they pressure you because you're vulnerable, you're a victim. What are you talking about? Because you're you're pushing people back into this victim mentality that they don't need to be in to begin with. Yes. They, they need to be, and people just need to, no. This is her not taking responsibility for people that she's victimized. For her own influence. Yeah, she's recruited people into her MLM and then she's like, if they don't make money, then she can just be like, well, you should not have joined. Yeah. Even though I highly pressured you. <laughs> You, that was your decision. You shouldn't have done that. It's like maybe you shouldn't be recruiting people when you know that they're not. Well, you shouldn't be recruiting people in general, but like especially if you know that they're not in a financial position to be yeah. doing this. Under this view, fraud doesn't even exist. Yeah. I mean, think about that. You can scam anybody and it's not never your fault yeah. because Everyone... they are the ones that like invested into it. Exactly. Anybody who gets scammed, it's just their fault. No, no, no one needs to live in the victim mentality and you want them to. Yeah. You feed off of this. Okay, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense to me. We're not feeding off of people's victim mentality. It's just that we care about social justice yeah. and you don't. And victims do <laughs> exist. People are victims of things. Yeah. Oh, that's just a mentality. Oh, gosh. You, well, you know, if you if if you pretend that problems don't exist hard enough, you might be able to convince <laughs> yeah, yourself. Yeah, let's all live in some sort of fantasy world where there's no victims and everything is just a result of your work and your exactly. what you put into it. So take responsibility for your actions. If you were wildly successful in network marketing, like some people claim to be, I will promise you, you would have never left anyway. And not because of the money, but because of the person you would have actually developed into being. That's the honest to God truth. That's a no true Scotsman. She's saying, yeah. well, if you were a yeah. true Emma Lemmer and you were truly successful, then you wouldn't have left. Yeah. She's talking about a lot of the anti Emma Lemmers who were in the 1% and they left after seeing like behind the curtain, like oh. not the good girl. I think that's who she's referring to. Yeah. And she's saying, well, you weren't, if you were a true Emma Lemmer, you wouldn't have left. Like if you were truly successful, you would have stayed in. That's just a no true Scotsman. Yeah. Which she probably, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> she probably doesn't know what that is. But anyways, moving on. I've never met anybody who is successful at anything that sits around and talks consistently about people. And I've never met anybody who is successful who lives off of hate videos. Whether it's hating a profession, whether it's hating a person, whether it's hating a thing, a place, a whatever. I mean, okay, in part one, if you didn't see it, she actually said that being anti anything is very toxic. So I'm, I'm wondering, is she defining hate video as anything that is anti anything? I think so. Is, do those I go mean, hand in she, hand? In the first part, she said that being anti anything is bad. Like if my channel's based on being anti religious harm. Yeah. And again, it's just like any progress made in the world, it's by people who stood up and said, this is not okay. Yeah. And we're anti. I mean, isn't, isn't our country kind of founded on being anti fascist being an, like anti-totalitarian yeah. anti-monarchy anti uh <laughs> it's just standing up for injustices yeah so anytime you stand up for injustices by her logic that's just like automatically a bad and negative thing and there's never been a single successful person that's done that <laughs> that's what you're implying here i know you're not directly saying it but yeah. all your statements add up to this so when these people make the videos or they talk terrible about the profession or they say these are vulnerable people, they go after this, they go after that, you have to understand the responsibility and the accountability of what you have chosen to do with your life. I've made a choice, just like Colleen's made a choice, to be successful. Just like a lot of people in this profession have chosen to be successful. There is a whole lot of of money in the network marketing space. A whole lot of people making supplemental income, part-time income, full-time income, and absolutely life-changing income. This is what successful or privileged people say to protect their standing in society mm -hmm. from criticism. That's what this statement is for. I don't know if she realizes that or not, but it's perfectly in line with what the man says to keep people down on purpose. Yeah, I don't think she realizes that. I don't think she's like following her line of thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Just because it's not for you does not mean that it's not for everybody. Just like your jobs that some of you have are not for me. 
I'm a terrible employee. I absolutely deserve to be fired from the pathology lab when I was fired. I am not good at working for other people. I am great at working for myself. I am great at holding myself accountable for stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is the network marketing profession has unbelievable products, incredible services, and it provides it provides an opportunity for the average person to, to have an unbelievably above average life. I mean, no, literally on average, it does not do yeah. that. Literally, like yeah. the, the average that you make in, in an MLM is less than the average that you make in most other employment yeah. opportunities. That is just factually untrue. Yeah. You can look at the data again. Please, if you're gonna make these arguments, have data to back it yeah. up. And if you don't want to use the John M. Taylor study, whatever, look at your own company's income <laughs> disclosure. <laughs> On average, most people are not making an above average life. No, I think it's a completely untrue statement to say, you know, average people can have above average lives with this when on average. They have below <laughs> average <laughs> lives. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, I look at my life and how it has transformed and I look more importantly at the people I don't know why I'm not in front of my wall like I usually am but I look at the people whose lives have shifted because I've had the opportunity to mentor them and coach them mm -hmm. and that is priceless yep and just because you made the choice to quit I'm not gonna make a video about you wait well I got stuff to do I mean why you moved on like I I am happy for you if you're happy. Uh, the thing is, not all anti-MLMers are people that have quit. Like, I've never been an act actual yeah. part of an MLM. I just looked into it for myself and I was like, oh, this is really messed up. I, yeah. I'm not a former MLMer. Also, why would she make a video about someone who quit if she doesn't think that they're doing anything unethical? The difference is we think you're doing something unethical, so we make videos about what you're saying. <laughs> it's not that hard. The fascinating thing is your level of unhappiness is spewing everywhere. And I know I had a conversation with you in the DM earlier. It's like, I just don't think you understand how the internet works because the level in which the hate videos are made about me is a bit alarming. Like it is very loud in the space right now. Just to clarify, this is not a hate video about you. Yeah. We are commenting about what you're saying. It's like, well, I know my numbers are up in my business. Cause I mean, I can see how many people I'm recruiting. I can see how much I'm selling and I can see our right. team volume. So I see. Okay. So you know how data works. <laughs> and when, it, and when it's about clear. her business, she knows. Yeah. That. What's happening in my business. But I will tell you, I did not realize the popularity shift because of how much they can't stop talking about me. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a rap song and I put it in my little post in my story today. <laughs> and it's like, I don't care what you say about me. Just keep talking. Yeah. You can't get rid of me. And, and, and the fact of the matter is the amount of money you can make from monetizing YouTube will be nowhere near the amount of wealth accrued through the network marketing space. Let's just look at the data between how many YouTubers are millionaires versus how many MLMers are millionaires. Yeah. Like, I don't know the data off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure there's more YouTubers that are millionaires versus MLMers. Most likely so, but there is the difference that YouTubers aren't out there trying to make other people YouTubers so that they can make money. Yeah. And they're not claiming that you can be a millionaire by being a YouTuber. There are those that, that put ads before MLM videos a lot of the time. It's a lot of the time the people who are claiming that you can be a rich, successful YouTuber are also the people who are involved in network marketing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would be a scam yeah. to say that either one is a, is a reliable and safe uh, investment because most of the time it's not. Captain save a ho or whatever, <laughs> okay? I just want to let you know I've taken it upon myself to turn as many people as humanly possible into six and seven figure annual earners. So thank you for your help. I want to explain how SEO works. I want to explain how keyword search works. I want to explain how often you search stuff. I want to explain that when you hashtag boss Lee, I wore it today for them. I know it's so when you hashtag boss Lee, when you type Jesse Lee in for uh, clickbait on your YouTube videos, 
the next video in line tends to be mine. And they go to my page where I am also monetized. She, I, I've watched this previously. She makes this statement and when I went to look, like look at her YouTube channel, I really doubt that like a bunch of people are watching anti MLM videos and then going and watching her videos because I mean, the views compared to anti MLM to her videos, like it's not comparable. Like she gets around 200 views per video, which is not like a bad thing. I'm not saying it's bad that you are only getting that, but you're saying that like you're getting more people on your page because of anti MLM. And like when I look at her, your channel, I just don't really see that being the case. Also, anti-MLM YouTube had a significant hand in shutting down uh, and exposing an, yeah. an MLM recently. Oh yeah, I should bring that up. So this exact thing that she's saying right now is exactly what Black Oxygen Organic said. Mm -hmm. Like when all the anti-MLMers started covering Boo and were yeah. um, like getting a lot of traction with it, all this like executives for Boo were like, oh, keep on talking about us because our business is actually, we're like getting more business now and we're improving. Literally a month later, they shut down. Yeah. So it's, I'm not gonna say it's not true, but like it probably isn't true. Make hate videos about Colleen or you make hate videos about me or you make hate videos about any other network marketers. <sighs> yeah. The problem is they splice our videos. So they take everything wildly out of context. I'm watching your video in full. <laughs> and when the, when the YouTube, when YouTube shows them my entire training video, people go, that was, uh, that was nothing like what I just watched when it was spliced up and yeah. chopped apart and, uh, 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 uh uh, I like that boss Lee girl. Correct. So you keep on doing what you are doing because I promise you, you are doing a service to Colleen. Her business, I mean, I've watched your business over the last few months. Her business is exploding. <laughs> and I've watched my business. I've watched my podcast. I know it's they're making videos out of this. We are, we guys, you, let, let me explain it like this. Do you think Colleen and I did not intentionally make sure we let everybody know? hours before that this would be happening like we're fully aware they are our unpaid marketing public relations and advertising firm and so for those of you who are getting bullied right now by them you have to have that mindset switch you have to understand that they will make you they will not break you it is your choice to look at what they say i've never watched a video i've looked at some of their comment sections and i'm like Ooh, I'm really, child I don't watch, I've never watched a single minute. She's never watched any anti MLM videos or looked at any of our arguments, but yet so much of both of these women's Instagram pages and their social media is defending MLM and like trying to take down anti MLM arguments. I mean, we're responding to an hour long stream debunking all of the arguments within those videos. Apparently. Yeah, but she hasn't watched them. But my thing That's is also like if you're defending MLMs and you're trying to debunk our arguments, shouldn't you be like watching us to see what our arguments are? Yeah. Like, how do you even know what we're saying if you're not watching us? Like, I watch their content because I want to see if they have any good arguments. I want to see if maybe there's something I'm missing. Yeah. Maybe there is some data that will reveal that MLM is not a scam. I want to see if that exists out there. But instead, they're just putting on blinders and being like, well, I'm just going to debunk anti-MLM arguments, even though I apparently don't know what they are. That is not a winning strategy in the long run. No. No, no need. No need. But and I then, promise. The screenshots are like, oh, my God, there's another one. I'm like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Another one. That is so funny. Wow. And then my follower account goes up. My in like influences goes up like account scene goes up guys i mean meanwhile a lot of the creators and a lot of the viewers of those videos are seeing you say oh wow that's so cute that they're doing this meanwhile inside those videos that you apparently never watch people are saying you are scamming people in this way i am holding you ethically accountable and you're just saying i don't even bother to watch that 
<laughs> you don't engage with people who are trying to hold you morally accountable. I mean, I agree. There are things that are said in anti-MLM videos that I would not stand behind. I would not make those statements myself. I don't think they're appropriate. But the core of this community has been ethical business practices. Yeah. That's kind of what this is entirely about. And you say you don't even engage with that? I mean, if somebody came to me and said, hey, what you're doing is really, really unethical, I would hear them out. Yeah. At least. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts for all that you do for us. I hope they don't delete their screen recordings now. Like, I hope they continue with their plan of attack. Because, uh, <laughs> like, they're they're going to be on the defense at this point. Oh. I, I like it. It's like the the, the 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 count of viewers drops by, like, a, like a couple people. And then, oh, it's too late. Like, we, we already exposed you. Um, but I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> you have done more of a service to the network marketing profession than you realize. Because um, I am actually very grateful. I'm really, really grateful for the exposure and in, in, for the profession as a whole. Yeah. And what I mean by that is there's so much good. There is so much good going on. There is so much education going on. There is There are so many beautiful, beautiful stories of people who are succeeding. I mean, are they not aware of the fact that they're losing the culture war? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, the absolutely. culture is, most people are aware that MLMs are scams at this point. Yeah. So they're saying like, oh, they're, you're boosting network marketing by doing this when in fact we've seen anti-MLM content has shifted the culture in general to be... To the point where companies have disappeared yeah, because of it. Yes, like tons of MLM companies are struggling. Like there's been whole ass documentaries on Netflix and there was Lula Rich on Prime about MLMs and like... Well, I mean, in their defense, they don't know that because they don't well, watch any of it. That that shocks me. It's That's like, how do you not, like, I actively try to see what other people are saying. Yeah. Because I want to make sure that the position I hold is based on the evidence. Yeah. And they are putting themselves so far in an echo chamber that they can't, they don't even know what's That's, actually happening. That's dangerous. And <laughs> that's just how it works. That's just how it works. And I And I've never never met a hater doing better in any facet of my life never and you will never meet a hater doing better than you never oh, people don't don't oh, how did i hear it the other day I just, yeah so this is how it, people are like punching from the bottom is what the, I, think, I wish i could give credit like, ah, ah, like you look so ridiculous like i don't want to come down there anyway you little troll like stay, stay stay in your hole what are you but you are coming down though <laughs> you're making a whole hour-long video about us yeah that's true but i mean that's isn't this the way that social justice just works oh he's mad now yeah he's mad tell him <laughs> it, this is the way that social justice works People do punch up. There, there's there's too much power in the hands of the powerful, and they use it unethically. So people with less power punch up to try to yeah. e equalize that. Yeah, that's how it works. You're not even a cute troll with a little treasure gem in your belly. Like you're a, you're a under the bridge troll. Go away. <laughs> Quit punching from down there. Like I'm up here doing my thing. Like goodness gracious. Yeah. Um, but anyway, they, they can't they can't stop you. That's just a fact of the matter, and that just goes to the importance of, um, you know, the omnipresence of your social media platforms. Mm -hmm. you know? so. Who's like, if it's one nasty comment from a troll on the internet, it's a nasty comment from your aunt, or you have people dedicating their free time to making videos about you. It really when it comes down, you're showing up and you're doing things in the right way, and you're furthering the network marketing profession and that's really what we're here to do so if you're on thanks if you're not also thanks because you're helping us out so yeah trust um, me they are they are <laughs> hey guys so i forgot to record an outro for this video so here's some footage of puggles Thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A huge thank you to my patrons who help make these videos possible. If you guys would like to follow me on social media, my Instagram handle is Taylor underscore the underscore antibot and my Twitter handle is the antibot. If you'd like to contribute to this channel financially, my Patreon will be linked in the description and I'll see you all in the next one.